Last week, we looked at the book 1984 and we visited our good friend Eduardo Snowden on a roller coaster of a ride around the exciting world of internet privacy. This week, we'll go back in time and to the present and look at McCarthy's favorite political group, the Socialists. We talk with people who should be far past dead but have been resurrected for this very show and we'll feature one special guest later on. From Germany to Tottenham and to Vermont, who is socialism and her sister democracy? This is Roger the Shrubber. Our story begins here, Germany. In Germany. Karl Marx, born in Prussia in 1818 and proceeded to become one of the most revolutionary socialist thinkers in all of history. His works include the Communist Manifesto, published with Friedrich Engels about socialism and the relationship to capitalism, and also Das Kapital, again, about socialism and capitalism. For socialists like Karl Marx, capitalism was fundamentally wrong. Some would say categorically false. The idea that people should be influenced by profit meant companies would take advantage of others' poor situations and that all of their actions would be driven by greed and never by personal responsibility nor desire. Naturally, the only way to make economic equality was to completely obliterate every last bone in the capitalist skeleton and only only until it was crushed to dust can you rebuild from its ashes and blood, piece by piece, a better and more just world. Kind of like my Aunt Cass in her local bookshop. Socialism encompasses the belief that workers such as myself and the state should have control over production and property, rather than the pesky bourgeoisie such as my camera. Wait, you're my boss. Every ideology has its utopia. Capitalism has a free market. My Aunt Cass gets those Cuban cigars and eating fried yellowtail. What would it look like for socialism? Let's ask Marl Karx. Hey Marx, my producer told me that you don't speak a lick of English. Yeah. Also, I will continue the conversation in fluent German. So, Herr Marx, was ein Socialist utopia, what would that look like in your vision? It will be a world with no bourgeois, no class inequality, and thus no class tension. There will be no private property. It shall be run by the state or run by the workers. Their class, my friend. It sounds so cool. And the methods. Yeah, the methods to achieve this utopia, how, how would that plan out? The immediate aim of the communist is the same as that of all the other proletarian parties. Formation of the proletariat into a class, overthrow of the bourgeois supremacy, conquest of the political power by the proletariat, in short, through violence and revolution, Shall we make this world fair? Ach, du klingst wie eine Ziege, my friend. And finally, would you like to say anything to this camera, to the bourgeoisie watching you at home? Yeah. The bourgeoisie has torn away from the family and its sentimental veil and has reduced the family relation to mere money relation. Let the ruling classes tremble at a communistic revolution. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have a world to win. Karl Marx reminds me of Karl Markovitz, 90s Austrian actor best known for his role as Stockinger in Austrian hit TV show Inspector Rex. The story now brings us to Tottenham Court Road in London, where in 1903 the Second Congress of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party was held. 
the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party voted to split the party along socialist and social democratic lines. For the Bolsheviks, it was a huge success, and it was the last time success would come to Tottenham for well over a century. Bolshevik ideology tended towards hardline socialism, as leaders frequently advocated for a violent overthrow of the ruling class and destruction of the Russian bourgeoisie. On the other hand, their cross-town rivals, the Mensheviks, advocated on lines of social democracy, campaigning for a democratic revolution, opposed violent social rebellion, and wished to maintain existing capitalist structures. However, in 1917, nearly two decades after the split of the RSDLP, the only constant in European society was that Tottenham was still horrendously dreadful, as the Bolsheviks led a violent revolution in Russia and proceeded to establish a socialist dictatorship. If violent socialist revolution isn't really your vibe... Then look to America. The baddie daddy of the West, Bernie Sanders. Bernard Sanders, Senator of Vermont, two-time runner-up for the Democratic nomination and Vogue's number one mitten model. Bernie is an openly social democratic politician, and through his elegant Brooklyn accent, he has reached the hearts of many Americans through his stances against wars and the intervention of private companies in politics. So Bernie, what is social democracy? Now people call me a socialist all the time, but I'm telling you this, they're wrong. I am not a socialist, I believe in social democracy, and let me explain how in America we would achieve social democracy. First of all, we would have state control of property, but not state ownership of property. We are in state control of property because private citizens would still be owning these businesses, owning these companies, but the state would be enforcing regulations on it to make it fair and to make it just. Now, second of all, we would achieve a social democracy through gradual change. None of this violent revolution stuff, because violence is never the answer. And we would do this by number three. We would work within a capitalist society. We will not run away from capitalism. We will not scurry away like frightened chipmunks. We will work within our capitalist society and we will tame capitalism to create a just society, to create this social democracy where we will maintain these capitalist elements because it is part of our society and we must remain that way. Bernie, what does social democracy look like to you? Social democracy, for me, in America, it looks like this, right? First of all, I want the complete equality amongst the classes, okay? None of this upper class, middle class, working class biz. I want complete equality amongst the classes, second of all. Second of all, for social democracy in America, the government needs to invest seriously into social welfare programs, and third, and this is the most important, I call this the three pillars, I call this the three pillars of Bernie Sanders. Okay, first, first of all, first of all, yeah, I want free college for all. I want public college tuition. I want public college tuition for every goddamn American. Second of all, second of all, I want Medicare for all, medical insurance for every single American. And third of all, third of all, give me the mic, third of all, hashtag raise the wage, raise the wage, $15 minimum wage for every single American. So Bernie, some people have said that socialism and democracy and capitalism cannot coexist together in one nation. And what do you say to that? Well, first off, I want to know who the hell is saying this, because that's horse right? That's totally untrue. Of course, socialism and capitalism and democracy can all exist at once in a country. And there are examples to prove it. Look at Norway and look at Denmark and look at these nations where they have all these privatized industries. They have privatized businesses, but they're controlled by the state. The state regulates them. And this is exhibiting like one of the core tenets of social democracy. So you can't say that socialism and democracy can't exist. And they're all combined with these glorious, these wonderful, these beautiful, Beautiful social welfare programs and they're making life better for the citizens and they're doing this with the combination they're doing with this with socialism with democracy and with capitalism over time the desires of working class and middle class people shifted and while in desperate times called for utter destruction and revolution a modern setting called for a silly old man with cute mittens social democracy to many is the way to achieve economic and social equality in a realistic way like Norway or Canada, 
But as the desires of the middle and working class become less urgent, or perhaps with a tyrannical takeover of Wall Street bros, social democracy may lose its relevance with new priorities and perhaps a new socialism will be born. So the last thing I want to say is remember kids, look at the squirrel! Ciao!